Okay, so we're about to get into the supercar and expensive car territory. Starting off with probably my favorite manufacturer ever, Aston Martin. They are known for providing James Bond with his vehicles, but also for making brilliant looking cars and some fast luxury vehicles just overall. And then they made this. The Aston Martin Laganda. Okay, for one, you can't have a nice vehicle and have it named Laganda. It just doesn't work. It sounds like a bad Malaysian tourism company. Uh, Laganda Tours Incorporated. This just sounds, I don't know, dumb. Also, it looks like a pencil. Like, Aston Martin's supposed to be sleek, smooth, Rounded edges, maybe some sharp parts here and there. Cool grills and fast. This was slow, the grill was shit, it was too sharp looking, and as I said, looked like a pencil. James Bond's broke cousin would drive this. Now, I have been in one of these from an airport once um, in England. There was actually one of these, it was a transport from the airport to where we were getting picked up at, uh, at a bus stop, because the bus was late or whatever. I got to ride one of these, and the interior is what you expect from Aston Martin. It's nice, and I mean, even though it's 80s cheese and cheap, it is still quite nice. I know this is British oil on Aston Martin, but still, I expected better from you, Aston Martin. You were just too good of a company to do this. And now, this wouldn't be so bad, except they brought back the name in 2017 for one more go, and it wasn't as bad, but it still looked like an aborted Rolls Royce. If you don't believe me, look it up yourself. Put it in Aston Martin 2017 Laganda. Uh, it's smooth and doesn't have so many dragon lines, don't get me wrong. But it's not right. When I think of Aston Martin, I think of badass James Bond car chases or just good looking cars driving through nice mountain scenery. I don't want to think of Hell's Inferno and a furnace in a dump. Let's move on to the thing I'm going to get a lot of hate mail for. Lambo fans, please don't kill me. Yeah, okay, I know the Countach is a beloved Lamborghini and a beloved supercar overall. I know it defined the decade. But that's kind of my point. This design has not aged well. And let's, let's talk about the spoiler, right? It's huge and stupid. I don't care if I'm going to you can't remove the damn thing. And then eventually when they did it for the SV, give you the option to remove the spoiler, it just looked like a greenhouse roof, really. It's not a good looking car. It literally looks like you took a much nicer Lamborghini, maybe a shortened down version of the brilliant Lamborghini Miura, or Miara, I don't know how to pronounce that, and just slapped a body kit onto it. And we've learned a lot of the body kits about how ugly the Dodge Demon ended up looking. That was a terrible looking car. This is a Hellcat Challenger with a body kit on it. And it's modified by tuning. This car is criticized for having a plastic interior, plastic -y everything. Now, this is actually what led to Lamborghini's original collapse. Um, this and some other terrible cars. But, I mean, I know it was the product at the time, but. Oh my god, I could. It would be hard to find. So much plastic if I went to a plastic bottling factory. It's just, everything is so plastic -y. And I know, they kept, they're trying to give it a cool little mean looking snout. But I, got more, I get more inspiration from looking at a pig snout than this. It just does not hold up well. It's an ugly car. And I have been one of the few who have never liked this car. Um, performance or design... I don't like the Countach. And you may hate me for that, but next up is a Lamborghini that I'm pretty sure we can all agree is shit. Hello, Decline of Sales Prices. Hello, Lamborghini. So, this is a car I only found out about because it was in Forza Horizon 4 as a car pass thing very recently. I would never bother to find out about this car otherwise. It's called the, I'm gonna get this wrong now what I say, Drama? Drama? <laughs> Drama? Ja-rama? Drama? 
Anyway, point being, it's the direct descendant of the Lamborghini Jalapa. One of Lamborghini's, Lamborghini's last cars. And it's not a good looking vehicle. It's... It's got the back end of a Ford Pinto. Okay. That's a travesty in its own right. The front end is a Nissan 240Z-ish looking thing. I love the 240Z, don't get me wrong, but it just... This car does not mesh well, and it's only available in green, yellow, and orange from stock. Now, I know people will obviously repaint it much nicer colors, such as blue. Uh, my favorite colors are blue and yellow, or blue and gold. But uh, on a car like this, they, they chose a very off yellow, kind of like an egg yolky yellow. It's a yellow that reminds you of throw up. I know that, and of course, they also have the burnt goldy orange color from the picture. That should be that should, that should have appeared before the segment. Um, what else about this car? It's tires. This thing's rocking twenty-inch rims. That's just disgusting. Lamborghini should not have twenty-inch rims, unless you're the LM002 truck they built back in the eighties. Which, yeah, it's stupid. It's ugly. But it's my kind of stupid. I think it's funny that LM002 Rambo Lambo. But we're here to roast and criticize the ugliness that is the drama. It's just, it's a pancake. It's ugly, it's horrible. Um, it's, I've always said the, the, the middle and back section of the body is like the AMC Pacer, Gremlin, and Four Pinto put together. Now, the AMC Pacer and Gremlin are not on this list just because I really don't think they're that bad. I've, I've seen worse. Um, AMC was going downhill the point anyway. I mean, AMC's highlight is being in films like James Bond movies for once uh, with the Hornet. But uh, yeah, this car isn't a good looking vehicle. I could have seen it maybe in a James Bond film like Live and Let Die. Because it doesn't look, it doesn't look anything like a Lamborghini should. And I know the Countach, it, like, it doesn't look like a Lamborghini Countach. It doesn't look like a Diablo. It looks more like a Jalapa and it looks something like a Mira, the big Lamborghinis at the time. It's just an insult, and honestly, slap a Pontiac badge on it, and you might have a sellable car. But as a Lamborghini, the design is just such a letdown, it has to be on this list, it's a terrible looking vehicle. And even the most die-hard Lambo fans cannot defend the drama. Seriously, Lambo. Lamborghini. Why? Three strikes are out, Lamborghini. I'm sorry. I have three Lamborghinis on this list in a row, and even if you could maybe defend the drama, which you shouldn't be able to defend anyway, no one can defend this monstrosity. I mean, how to pronounce this? The uh, portfolio? I don't know. So this car came out of a very awkward partnership slash buyout deal with Chrysler, who lent their name and badge to some of the worst I don't know who this car has ever made. I mean, even the S series is just, just bad. But this was. They actually did sell a few of these units. It's not just a prototype. So let's start with the wheels, right? Actually, I, have a, I keep looking down because I have a picture right here. Let's start out with the vehicle's wheels. They are. You know the term anal prolapse? I'm assuming that's what that looks like, because this is like, is that some of the stuff on the camera shutter? Um, uh, the whole thing looks like, you know, like, like movies, like, from the 80s, like, oh, cars will all look like this in the future. That's what this is. That those laughably bad movies that have cars that are, like, just bland, the most bland they ever. I said the Lamborghini Drama is bland, yes, for Lamborghini, but that could have worked, as I said before, like a Pontiac, that a Lamborghini Drama, the Pontiac badge would have sold. This looks like a Ford Probe. And as I already mentioned, it's not a good thing. It sells in a teal bronzy color, a bright yellow color, which I'll miss is just an assault to the eyes. Speaking of eyes, the headlights are just de deformed. Or a fur, they literally called this color fur honorary red. Yeah, because you're, you're gonna take a big jab at your highest end rival. You want to do it with the worst car you've ever made. Um, 
I'd rather have a Lamborghini branded chainsaw and or tractor than drive this thing. It's pathetic. Because nothing good ever comes from a merger with Chrysler. I would like to... What punishment should I give this horrific beast of a car? And by beast, I don't mean in the good way. I mean in the way that literally I have to slay and kill it. Um, I don't, I don't know. Drop it from a plane? It seems too tame. Blow it up? Too cliche. Only thing, I, I, honestly, if you want to use a torture chamber, right? If you want, if you want to make a homemade torture chamber, use one of these, right? Just, no, no, you don't need anything else. You don't need anything else but just this vehicle. In fact, why don't torturing people, uh, people who torture people, use this car anyway? It's not a whole ton of cash, and it's probably cheaper than torture chamber. And don't worry, you will go insane, because on the inside, there are futur futuristic dials and lights. And if you have OCD or ADHD, or even ADD, you'll want to, um... Shove your head under the exhaust and then hit the gas and just gas it off to death with exhaust fumes. Uh, it, the interior is a mess. The seats are all plasticky because no one learns the lessons from cars like the Kuhn Dodge and the Diablo, which always made it on this list, but you know what? The SV version really redefined that car and made it brilliant towards the end of its life. This car has no redeeming qualities. Oh, we also they stole the back end window from a Mustang. Fuck you. Now, okay, if you've been following these videos for a while, it'll come as no surprise to you that I love Subaru. They're reliable, dependable, and normally look pretty cool. Except for whatever the fuck this was. The Subaru Brat. Now, the name should speak for itself. Overpinionated. Now, just because Chevy and Ford had great sex with Chevy's El Camino racing truck, car, hybrid, does not mean that Subaru could. It's a small bed pickup truck, which I have no problem with. The Ford Raptor's pretty cool, and the Toyota Hilux is amazing. But when you just stick wheels from the Subaru SVX, which also made on this list as well, on the body of a, tr a racing truck with a shortened El Camino bed, you get a hunchback of a car. Now, if you happen to be have a back deformity, I am sorry. This is the car for you. Also because the seats are curved towards the steering wheel. So you actually have to drive like this. I've been in one of these trucks. I got picked up in a lift, like from Lyft in a Subaru Brat. It's just, it's, it's an abomination. The wheels are, I made fun of, like, I think it was, was it the Lamborghini, was it the Drammer or the Kuntash for having 20 inch rims? This has 18 inch rims on a Subaru. Now, modern day Subarus have gold rims and a blue paint job. This has a paint job from the colors that brought you, well, hell. You get brown, green, burgundy, and I don't know why, pink. Yes, this came in stock color of pink. Disgusting. And of course, the shapes are futuristically symmetrical. No, they just look really out of place. Come on, who has a window design like that? And it's just, honestly, you don't realize? I've had the truck hold, just get rid of the whole truck part, get rid of the wheels, put some engines on it, soft it up a little bit. You have, it's like in your mind, right? Or digitally, I don't know, take a picture. Remove the wheels and flatten it out. You have an actually kind of cool looking low end speedboat. But here you just have an nonsensical fuckwad from a brand that's normally known for making absolutely brilliant looking cars. Like, look at Subaru's Impreza. That car is amazing. Now, it may not look like a Lamborghini, but I no, because it's a lovable little hatchback that can do anything. This isn't even a car I hate to love. It's a car I love to hate. Now, also earlier on I mentioned that Ford didn't make that many bad cars, or maybe the Probe. Well, it did make one. Why? What were you going for? 
I'm so confused. Now, there's the whole stereotype about this car being for women. That's also because of Ford's female-oriented marketing campaign for the vehicle. Also because of the fact that people associate women with the color pink, and that's its one of its main colors is pink. Um, they're cheap. They started out about twelve thousand dollars back in the day when they were first the thing. You can go in now for like two thousand dollars, but that begs the question: Why do you want to? And the owner's trying to sell it. Why don't you just burn it? No one will ever buy this. Prove my example. There's been one sitting uh, at a carpet cleaning store for um, just outside. That's the car section. Right? Carpet cleaning. It's car pet cleaning. It's a, it's a really weird car. Actually, it's a really great pun. It's a car wash, carpet cleaning, and a pet washing station. Anyway, carpet cleaning, right? They got it priced at $24,000. No one bought it for a year. They took it down all the way to $4,000. It's been three years. No one has bought this vehicle. They had other cars that sell out in a week. They had a really cool looking old Camaro and even an old Corvette. The, for that one, for $20,000, those sold. This car is now $1,500 for the last eight months. No one's bought it. No one likes this vehicle. The styling looks like... <sighs> I would say, I'd say it's done. Um, an adult toy of sorts. Yeah, don't deny it, it does. Um, the rims. Hello, 22 inch rims. Can you please stay on shitty modified Subarus and monster trucks? And not on whatever the hell Ford thought this was? Also, the name Thunderbird is such a cool name. But, uh. I mean, it was meant as a response to the Firebird, which at this point was already dead anyway, basically. It was reverted to being the same thing as a Chevy Bel Air. Um, but, you know, not nice. Uh, sorry, Chevy Apollo, not nice. Um, this, this, uh, they ruined the word Thunderbird by applying it to the most gopping car in the world. The, had a hood, a non-functional hood scoop. And the fact that this car had a V6 or a V8 engine just appalls me. Now, I've not ever been a huge fan of a V8 engine, but I will stand up and say, this car does not deserve the glory of a good V8. Because it had the V8 out of the Mustang. The 5.0 Mustang. The Shelby tuned one. The nice one. But this thing, it looks like a sex toy. It, it, it shaped terribly. The hardtop versions are absolutely no better. They had a portal in the back of them. Yeah, a legitimate portal. And, oh, by the way, did I mention you had to actually have a tool to get the gas cap open, which if you lost, oh, look, I can't drive my car, which honestly, for your dignity, is probably a good thing. The Thunderbird, no matter what version you bought, is a bad looking car. It's one of the worst cars Ford has ever made. Worse than the Ford Pinto, worse than the Probe. And then, just a few months ago, Ford made an astonishing announcement. This car has been canceled for a while, and they're bringing it back. And I'm like, I immediately went to look at all the designs that people found on the internet, and the one that Ford officially released was not worthy of an entire video, that's why it's not part of the series, but um, Ford. You've done it. You've redeemed yourself in the eyes of the public. It looks like a smoother, maybe more safe version of a Mustang. It's got a rockin' V, it's got a tur twin turbocharged V6 or a rockin' V8. And it looks really, really good. So if Ford can bring that to light, all this will be forgiven. But for right now, this mark on Ford's name will stand. Okay, yeah, the PC loser, or cruiser, but come on. No one with any intelligence bought or drove this vehicle. If you do own this vehicle, you probably only have a thousand dollars more about something cool, which is understandable. Then buy a Ford Probe, that's cooler than this. Buy a Mazda, that's cooler than this. Buy an old Subaru, even cooler than this. This car is Another bad thing that came out of Chrysler. Wow, they don't make anything good, do they? No, they don't. Um, 
The PT loser, not cruiser, loser, was a terrible car that was mercilessly cancelled until later this year because fuck you, they're bringing it back. God damn it. And it's not going to look cooler from what we've seen. It's going to look the exact same. And uh, don't even get me started on the open top V8 version, the Plymouth Prowler. Because we know that's a PT Cruiser just with a no top on it. Now, I actually wrote a blog article called The PT Loser a while ago on my old blog, which I don't think I'm going to be running anymore because it's taking up most of my time. Sorry if you guys actually read the Big Car Lot blog, and if it's worth spelling errors, not sorry about that. Anyway, point being, I did a review of 2005's PT Cruiser Convertible. That is the most horrific offense I've ever seen on a convertible car. And I've been in a 1998 Mustang. I made fun of the, uh, for, for the Gen 3 and 4 Mustangs, but, uh, nope, this is infinitely worse. And also, people who buy, bought the one that came standard with the fake wood paneling, I, I don't understand why you would do that. Oh, God. If, you, you must be mentally deranged or criminally insane to buy one with wood paneling. In fact, it's a mentally deranged criminal sin about in the first place. It's a bad car, it drives poorly, and um, these rims were actually banned from the US roads for being too dangerous because they'd fall off and split other cars' tires open, leading to numerous car crashes and even several close death cases, like near fatal injuries. No, actually, they did die, but almost like, as in, like, people got their chest cut from car crashes resulting in this car. Or actually, maybe they just, you know, crashed the car because they looked out and, uh, Thought they were in hell, so they're like, you know, I'm gonna kill myself. Boom. Cause this car is um, how to put this nicely? Shit, fucking brick. Ah, uh, Chevrolet, an interesting American automotive company founded by two people who were like even less that American. Um. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's an interesting embarrassment, a mark of shame, if you will. Let's just get started with the back styling. In fact, no, the whole body for starts here. It looks like a PT Cruiser. And that already makes it one of the worst vehicles on the planet. Because if you try to imitate that, you should be put to death. Now, I think I know exactly how this car got made, actually. So we went home, picked up their slipper, looked at it, and said... I'm drunk. After that, they bribed, I hope, everyone in the boardroom to say, yes, this needs to be made. This is a good idea. Not, okay, off to the gulag. <laughs> no, seriously, this is not a good looking vehicle. The front is has a hood the size of Gary Busey's forehead, which is equivalent to the Sahara Desert size. It's huge. Um, the wheels, the most ridiculous thing since the satellite from Lost in Space. They go way too far and actually be practical, and they cause so much resistance it's not even funny. The amount of, I guess, for lack of a better word, ground turbulence you experience in this vehicle is insane. Now, I get it. It's a racing truck. Racing trucks were kind of a thing for a while. Uh, by a while, I mean about five minutes. But it's a racing looking truck, and honestly, what really annoys me about this truck is it has the potential to look really cool. Now, one thing almost no brand can ever get right, especially in luxury cars, like Ferrari, look at Ferrari for example, are the door handles. They look like little ears, even more than the wing mirrors look like ears. And this car has uh, wing mirrors that put you draw, draw unwanted comparisons to Shrek. I mean, look at the damn things. Yeah. They could, like, to be fair, almost no car company, maybe Lamborghini because they have such hard flies they can work into that. But, like, Ferrari, even Aston Martin, actually, okay, Aston Martin has learned it better recently, but used to not be, like, no one used to be able to make door handles look nice or wing mirrors. But now, Chevy's still kind of stuck in the past. Now, this truck was only manufactured for a few years and became a modifier's favorite. You'll see it at modified car shows all the time if you are personally close to those. Uh, now, again, also, I have nothing against modified cars. I don't know if they're not stupid, but this is a bit like a smart car. You can only go up from the base. This car, it, it's got seats that remind me of this. An office seat. 
because of the back. And this, believe it or not, is not the most comfortable seat in the world. It's what I happen to find in the garage attic up there. And so I brought it down because I've been using this for a while now. Anyway, point being, let's talk about the, the, the thing on the front of the hood, the grill, if you will. Who went and bent a shower curtain over the hood and said, yes, this looks lovely, or ooh, Tron was cool for a while. Let's have light strips. No, 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 no. This is the most ridiculous thing Chevy's ever done, right? Well, actually, no. They've done a little bit worse. Okay, so when I said that there was a worse Chevy van PT Cruiser thingy, I meant this. Um, it's called the HHR. The HHR sounds like a specialized medical team that would need to rescue you from this burning wreckage of a vehicle because it caught on fire, as a vehicle is supposed to do. It only lasted a few years in the US, thank God, but while it lasted here, it was a monstrosity. It's not as, I guess, popular as the other one, the SSR, uh, the open top one, but this is definitely what happened if uh, the Ford Maloo and the PT Cruiser, um, you know, combined to make a van. Now, the Ford Maloo would be called a cake in this situation, and the PT Cruiser would be adding horseradish and mustard onto a cake. You get a dumpster fire and a turd and a half. It's just not good, and how somehow they messed up the arches even more. I mean, adding a roof to a car shouldn't be that difficult. But people at Chevy proved themselves somewhat incompetent yet again, and managed to mess even that up. So we only got one more car on this list. Because I didn't bother even want to mention the Prius car I kind of have. Let's just move on to our final car. This car is making its second mentioned appearance on the show. The first one being by Eric Dietz, and we're talking about some of the worst cars of the last car year, 2018, 2017. Um, the Nissan Murano Cabriolet is hideous. I thought the Mini Sportback was bad. No, I actually never bothered to look at it. It's, it's way too high. I never actually bothered to Google search this thing until I was looking this up, because I don't know mentioned it. I'm like, it's probably not that bad, because I've never seen it before. I've seen it a few times on the road in passing, so I'm like, can't be that bad. Oh my god, I don't want to kill myself. This is a terrible. Like, seriously, it's um, it's an SUV sedan size Nissan that's way too high off the ground and it's a convertible. All those things are bad high off the ground, SUV, convertible, and Nissan. None of those are good things. Oh god, it's just. This other this car makes me lose faith in humanity. And I thought the Saturn, a Saturn Ion was bad. It is. I might have thought of them from our mistakes. We have it. This came out in 2018. It's a new-ish car. And yet, people still bought it. Now, luckily, they stopped selling over here in the U.S. a few months after it launched. But places like Canada, Great Britain, and Japan are still feeling the full wrath of this monstrosity. To all those who are unfortunate to have one in their driveway, I'm sorry, but you are absolutely doomed. Anyway, thank you for watching this extremely rage-inducing episode of Let's Talk Cars. I enjoyed it.